Inverted bucket trap is a very common trap. It's quite popular. Um, the mechanism by which it functions is exactly what it sounds like, an inverted bucket. And here I have one, for example. Um, the inlet of the trap enters into the inverted bucket. So the inverted bucket, if it has condensate entering, the condensate is simply going to flow up and out the seat of the trap. When the condensate is removed to a certain extent, steam will begin to enter the trap. And that steam is going to make that internal bucket buoyant. And so that buoyancy will raise the bucket and close off the valve at the top. So that's basically the cycling operation of the inverted bucket that you're seeing is the steam opening and closing the bucket to allow condensate to leave. Now, the biggest downside to this trap is its ability to remove air. Um, because air is buoyant like steam, it's going to tend to elevate the bucket and close the trap. So our mechanism for air removal is this fixed vent orifice in the top of the bucket. And if we take a close look at the trap in operation, we can see steam escaping through that orifice. One application where this trap is really successful is main steam distribution drip legs. And the reason it's successful is because it doesn't have a lot of air to remove. If that header stays full of steam, the air venting capability is not as big of a deal. Um, I wouldn't want to use it in a kettle or an application where I'm shutting off the process and restarting it daily or even multiple times a day because I can have quite a lag for all the air to escape through the vent. An inverted bucket trap is almost impossible to troubleshoot with temperature other than it being cold if it's failed shut or clogged. So a cold trap's usually failed if all the valves leading up to it and out are open. Um, but the best, one of the best tools for troubleshooting this is sound. So with an ultrasonic trap tester, we can listen to the trap. And what we should hear on an inverted bucket is just kind of a clinkety clink as the valve seat opens and closes. And if you've got a trap tester that will log that noise signature over time, it'll look kind of like an EKG. Because if you look, you can see that float just sort of hopping up and down, opening and closing the trap. The reason we can't troubleshoot this trap with a, with a temperature gun is because the steam water interface is inside the bucket. We've actually got a wall of condensate in between us and that, so we can't use temperature to discern a level in there. A common mode of failure for these, however, is the trap losing its prime. By losing its prime, it means we've lost that layer of condensate and the inverted bucket doesn't have a way to uh, float, so it can't close. Once an inverted bucket trap loses its prime, it's usually going to stay failed open until we can reestablish that prime. One way to do that is to valve off the outlet and allow condensate to accumulate and then reopen it. But let's take a quick look at what it looks like um, when we lose prime. If we've got a sudden pressure drop on the system, we can actually flash steam out of the trap or even suck the condensate backwards out of the inverted bucket. So this is what's happening inside the inverted bucket trap when we lose prime. We don't have sufficient condensate for the inverted bucket to float and close. So it's pretty much stuck this way until we close the outlet long enough to allow condensate to refill it. So once our trap has flooded, um, which should be indicated by a slight decrease in overall temperature, we can open the outlet and that should allow the trap to resume normal operation.